Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Open up a fresh new copy of the free project files. The viewport overlays will be turned off, so find the icon and bring it back. Now select the monkey head, Suzanne, then press N to bring the end panel sidebar in the 3D viewport. In the bottom left, find the icon for the other editor and change it from shader editor to timeline. Making sure that Suzanne is still selected, find the rotation section in the item tab and press I. It will turn yellow. Then go to the bottom where it says 250 and change this to 360. Then here where it says 1, change it also to 360. In the item tab where it was previously yellow, it will turn green. Now click on the Z value and then with your arrow key to the right, bring the cursor to the extreme right and then type plus 360 and then enter. Then press I. In the properties panel to the right, make sure you are in the output tab and under format, change this percentage from 100% to 25%. Below where it says output, Select the folder icon, find your desktop or somewhere where you would like to save and accept. Then go to file format, click on this drop down menu and select FF MPEG video. Now in the top left corner, find render and click on render animation and watch the magic as it unfolds. All right, all right, so congratulations. Not only you just created your first render, but you actually just created your first 3D animation, just like that. So if you didn't download the free project files, well, odds are that your first render looks something like this. Not really exciting, right? So do yourself a favor and download the free project files because if you're not having a good time, then what's the point of learning all of this stuff? Okay, so back to us. Congratulations on creating your first 3D animation. And now let's just review what we just did because it took less than a minute, but did it? So first of all, in previous videos we learned about the viewport overlays and the viewport shading and what we did was to turn back on the viewport overlays so we could see what 3d object was selected in our scene and then we left clicked on Suzanne to select it and we knew it was selected and the active object because it had the bright orange outline. Then using the end shortcut we brought up the sidebar or end panel and we had access to the information about this specific object. Then because we knew that all of this is a modular workspace we swapped the editor down here from being configured on a shader editor to a timeline and then what we did here, we haven't covered yet, but very, very simply, we were now at frame one. And when we pressed I over here, we created a keyframe. So we told Blender to save this specific information on this frame. What we then did was to change the end frame from 250 to 360. So now our timeline has 360 frame, but we are still on frame one. So when we typed 360 here, 
we actually moved to the frame 360 at the very end of our animation. Because of this, Blender switched from being yellow over here to being green to tell us that these values have keyframes, but right now on this specific frame, the frame 360, we have not saved any specific value. What we did then was that we selected the degrees on the Z axis, click at the end of it or use the arrow keys. And then not everybody knows, but you can actually do math within these boxes. So what we asked Blender to do was to take the value that was already there and add 360 to it. And then we pressed enter to confirm. At this point, it seemed like nothing changed because we did a whole full 360 degree rotation. But when we pressed I, what we saved was a new value. And so Blender knew that between frame one and frame 360, that Suzanne had had to spin around the Z axis exactly 360 degrees which is one degree each frame. Then we went to this other editor, which we knew was the properties editor. And under the output tab, we switched the percentage of the output resolution to 25%. We did this because when you do your early tests or when you test a new animation, you likely want to test it at a quarter scale or at something that makes sense for your computer to render it out fast so you can see the mistake early fix them and then go and render out the final version there is no point on committing to rendering something for so many hours if then you have to go back and change everything and do it all over again what we did after was to define a directory on our machine where to save the output. And what we changed also was the format of the saved file. So we changed it from saving a PNG format, which is for a static single frame image to an FFmpeg video, which is the classical MP4 video that you are familiar with. And so here is the teachable moment. It took you under a minute to do all of this or something like that, but it took way longer to learn where the icons are. And so the lesson here is that oftentimes people will say to you, well, it only takes you five minutes to do it. Can't you do it? And well, it didn't. It didn't take you only five minutes or only one minute to do this. It took you several hours to learn how to do this stuff. So later on, when you become professionals, it comes a time when you have to price your time. And in that time, you should account not only for the time that it takes you to do the job, but also for the time that it takes you to learn how to do the job. Okay, so that was a little pro tip from my industry experience, but I do hope that this uh, free project file has made learning this first part a little bit easier and a little bit more exciting because I know that you know, learning technical stuff, it's not fun. And especially the last video is a little bit of a drag. So most stuff that we have seen in this video so far, you already know it from the previous videos. We have touched on some things that we did not cover before, like how to use the timeline editor, but that's coming soon in the, well, let's call it the next phase. But before we wrap this video up, I want to show you a few things from the outliner, which you already know fairly well, that are relevant to what we did today. So when we asked Blender to launch the render animation command, we went to render 
and selected Render Animation. However, if you select the option above, Render Image, Blender will render the frame at which you are at in the timeline, which is 360. And you can see it also over here, 360. Now, since we are dealing with still frame, if you want, you can bring this back up to 100%, and you will have a larger image at higher resolution. Now, in a previous video, we took a quick look at selectability and visibility. And we learned that this eye icon means that something is either visible or not. So this refers to what is viewable in the 3D viewport. Okay, so this is toggling between the visibility of the viewport meshes. And this one is toggling between the selectability of it. So if I untoggle this, meshes are now non-selectable. And if I try to select this sphere or the cylinder or select back Suzanne, I cannot do that until I reactivate back this one. Now you might notice that we have similar icons in the outliner. Now these icons refer to the individual object. So whereas this refers to the entire typology, to all the meshes, this one refers to the single objects. So I can toggle between the viewport visibility of Suzanne and that hides or unhides just Suzanne. The shortcut keys for that are that you select something and then you can press H as in hide and it will hide the object. And then if you have multiple objects hidden, you can press Alt H and that will bring back everything and those items will be selected. Now you might notice that there is also a different icon over here that looks like a camera. That disables, so to speak, the visibility in the render. So if I untoggle this and try to render out the image again, although Suzanne is visible in my viewport, Suzanne now it's not visible in the final output, the render. Now, if you go to the top right corner of the outliner, you have this filter icon that brings up a drop down menu from which you can select restriction toggles. And you will see that there is this one, which is, as you know now, about selectability. And once again, when this is shown, this is shown in the outliner, and so it refers to the single object. So I can now toggle the selectability of just Suzanne, and I can no longer select it, but I can select other objects. So once again, why is this useful? Well, these options, these restrictions, are there to make your workflow easier. So at some point you might need to make something non-selectable or just hide it out of the way from the viewport or maybe you need it there but you don't want it in the final render. Cool, so that wraps it up for this video. And once again, congratulations on not only making your first render but also your first 3D animation. And if you've been following this playlist, Congratulations on making it through 10 videos with this one being the 11th and you're well on your way in becoming an expert in all things 3D. Cool, so I'll catch you in the next video.